Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time with my good friend, Omar. How you doing, sir? Good up. What's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? What's up, Michael? Hey, so what I want to talk about episode number three is the importance of role models, right? Both role models when we started, both role models that kind of inspired us at the beginning. And also, role models in my speak don't have to be people you interact with. Like some of my role models are people I've never met. I even believe if I'm thinking about a couple of my role models have since passed on, but they created books or they created methodologies or things that I now follow. Um, but again, role models are an important part of this. So I thought I'd talk about who have been some of your important role models, Omar. Uh, well, my first, first role model, my dad, for oh, sure. Yeah. My, my pops, God rest his soul. If anybody had the chance to meet him, you would know immediately when you met him, he was just a, just a, a light and super wise man and literally went to him for for everything you know saw him work his ass off and i literally wanted to be like him mm. i wanted to 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 have the family to have the relationship to have um his his thoughts how he saw things and what he shared with us when when he was growing up with his dad and when he would always talk about his pops He'd get emotional um, every single time because he had that connection, just like I'm getting emotional talking about my dad now. And mm -hmm. it sucks. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a good thing because it, it was an impact that he had on, on, on myself, my, my brother, my sister. And it's just one of those things that like you can't replace it. And when you have a role model that you want to strive to be like with your, your own version, Mm -hmm. of it i should say not be like him but your own version with his blood running through you yeah um which was freaking awesome and you know he's taught me a lot he probably taught me too much because <laughs> i work like a mother effort <laughs> and just like he did um, always he working worked his all always working to provide because that was his mentality yeah to provide for his family and this is something like I do the same to, to, to a fault at times, but what else, you know, what else are you going to fucking do? Yeah. You know, you, you got a life, go do the best you can at it, leave a legacy, leave something for other people. I mean, his legacy still lives. We have a restaurant, yeah. um, you know, his last name, we carry it now, you know, my daughter's carrying it. My daughters are carrying it. It's cool it's that's the biggest role model that i've had in my lifetime yeah there's been other people that have come through and you know one in particular from the restaurant that he created was a customer that still goes today that we would talk about real estate when i was a waiter wow and and uh he'd be my he'd be the second role model uh that i would say that um uh that had an impact so yeah. my dad 100% and then someone I met um, at at the restaurant named Mike. I like Mike. Mike's, Mike's a nice guy. I like him. Michael Michael Palmer. Man. That guy <laughs> shout out Michael. Shout, shout out Michael. I'm going to send in this link too. There the you love. go. Um, one of the things I, when I think about role models, listening to you talk about your dad, um, God, my first experiences with a role model is kind of, kind of on the reverse, kind of the negative thing. Right. Sometimes role models, I think most time people role models are like, hey, I want to be like them. Unfortunately, I grew up in an environment where money was a stressor and I still unfortunately carry it now five decades later. Money's a problem. Right. Money. If you have money, you're happy. If you don't have money, you're angry and mean. And um, I never wanted that. Right. Why, why did I work at 12? Because I wanted to have my own money. Why, 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 why didn't, why did I work, you know, two jobs after graduating college? Cause I wanted money. Um, yeah, that, uh, that's still, it, it's, it's, st it sticks with you longer than you probably want it to. Right. It's, I can see that right now. Yeah. From it's, your pause. Yeah. It's, it's, I wish, I wish I can flush it, but it's just in me now. Right. And I didn't want my daughter to, or yeah, daughter to have that. And, you know, make sure that she went to college with no debt and just all of these things that were important to me because they weren't, they're kind of opposite of what I went through, right? So yeah, role models, sometimes a role model is, I don't want to be like them. 
right? And that's my first experience. My, my first positive experience, I remember I was a commissioned salesperson. And yes, I was on commission at 14, I think, uh, making one in 3%. And I, was, uh, I earned a reward to go to a, um, like I worked at a Sears Robux. It's, you know, they don't exist anymore, but I was selling craftsman tools and compressors and chests that's and all cool, these things, man. right? Making one in 3%. So I won an award. Uh, every month, the store manager would have an offsite for for the top ten people, right? The top ten salesperson, and I won one, and didn't I didn't even know it was a thing until I got a note, you know, from the 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 the, the store president or whatever he was called. And I go to this dinner, right? And I'm 14, can't drink, right? I, I had I had to get dropped off by my mom, right? Because I would take my bike to work, but this restaurant was like offsite, so my mom actually had to drop me off. It was, it's still funny. And I'm sitting around these table, everybody there, I want to say they were 40, but I was 15. So maybe they were really 30, right? They just, they were older than me. And I right. remember one guy, Dave, one guy, Dave, clearly um, he was the most in shape because a lot of these guys, they, they stirred around all day and they, you don't exercise, right? You get fat, f- fat. I mean, chunky. They, they weren't chunky for five years, right? They were fat. Yeah. <laughs> chunky's in the rear view mirror um but dave right he was in shape uh and he talked about his family glowingly and oh by the way he was the number one of the 10 of us right like he was that guy so that was my first experience with dave and ultimately over the years i became a friend of dave's and ultimately i get i get promoted right at sears like first commission is hardware and then you go make the they call them um white goods, I think they were like stoves, refrigerators, washers and dryers. So Dave sold refrigerators, I was selling washers and dryers. And to be around Dave um, really showed me what it was like to do customer service. He showed me what it was like to know your product because he, he, he would come in early, he would stay late. He, would, he was the only guy that I would know that would read the owner's manual of refrigerators. And he was selling refrigerators for 10 years. I'm sure there wasn't a time that he read something new in like five years, but every time a new model came in, he would, he would read the manual. He, he would do things others wouldn't do. To get yeah. things that others don't yeah. get. Yeah. It's, it's, and he was consistently number one or number two in the entire district. And so I saw that from afar and um, I, I just, yeah, I've, I've thanked him many times over the years and it, it really showed me that customer service, doing things that others won't, being consistent. And the, I mean, when I finally left, or actually when I came back to buy my refrigerator for the place we're living in now, I bought it from Dave, right? Of course I would. And he still reads the manuals like 35 years later. It's, it's just. And he's still there. Oh, he's since retired, but yeah, like, yeah, he's since retired, but um, yeah, he never left. He worked, he made, he made six figures selling, you know, refrigerators. That's how good he was. Damn. That's a lot That's of That's a lot of money. <laughs> That's a, that lot, is a of lot of money for refrigerators. Yeah. That's a lot of money. Holy yeah. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, that was when I think about my first role model. Again, think about that as a 14 year old, right? He's clearly in shape compared to all his peers. He's talking about his family glowingly, not, you know, talking about the side piece or whatever, like the other idiots. He's, he is drinking, but he's not drunk. Um, and oh, by the way, when I finally get to in his circle, right? Because he's, you know, it took a while for me to earn that just to see what he would do. He would get in early. He would do, I, I never saw another sales rep read an owner's manual ever. And he would read all of them. I'm like, it's, it's just, it was amazing. So that was like one of my biggest role models in the beginning that set up my entire sales career was, was doing things that others won't. And that, that that tells you something right there yeah the i wouldn't work. be this i wouldn't have been the i would not have been the successful salesperson if um dave was not a part of my world at 14 or 15 years old just wouldn't it's just it's it's amazing there to think about now example. 30 years later it's like wow i gotta call him i gotta see what dave's doing <laughs> that's oh, cool that, that's crazy Man, to think I love about it. yeah well let's, let's let's change this up a little bit um that was, that was really cool. I had no idea that story was going to come out of me. That's cool. Um, but now let's talk about role models that you have today that you may not know. Because I think the beauty of YouTube University, um, you know, other social media stuff is we can have role models that we never meet now. 
Do you have a role model out there that maybe you've never met that you like, Hey, every time he puts, he or she puts out something, you're like, yeah, I'm going to go check that out. Michael Zuber. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I appreciate that. I mean, Michael, like you, you, uh, you got your stuff going on, mm-hmm. you know, you have all these doors, you opened up your window on a Tuesday for you and I to talk Yeah, and, and picking your brain and seeing what's in there and you're openly sharing. Yeah. So, um, there's, the, the, there's role models that you can see on the outside that you don't really know, Yeah. but how much of it is reality and how much of it's bullshit. Yeah. So that's another thing. It's like, there's a lot of show. Yes. Right. And then, and then there's reality and, yeah. you know, talking to you, you're a humble dude. You're like, you got everything going on. And it, to, to me, it's like, you know, the flashy cars, watches, shit like that. Okay, cool. I can go buy that shit tomorrow. Yeah. I don't want to. Yeah. And then seeing you and it's like, yeah, no, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. You know, with the same background, the same background since you and I started. Yeah. You know, the same printer. Yeah. It's like fucking awesome. It's normal. <laughs> it's I mean, just... this is, it, and you're retired. Yeah. And you have a hundred and some 187 doors, or maybe 190 now. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah. So everybody that's look that's listening, role model right there. Uh, I appreciate right there, that. man. So I, I appreciate I appreciate the Tuesdays, man. I really do. Yeah, this has been a, you know, it's funny that you brought that up. So first off, thank you. Um, that's where I was gonna go first, right? I actually talk with eight multimillionaires a week. You know how cool that is for me? Eight oh. multimillionaires a week. We get to talk about whatever I want to talk about. It's really awesome, right? I, and again, I, I'm talking to people that do stuff I don't do. I don't have a brokerage. No idea. Never hired a real estate team. Never did. I don't Airbnb. I don't have, I don't have Lake Havasu. I don't have Big Bear. I, don't, I get to talk to you and learn stuff and be inspired. And I do with that with seven other people a week. I am, I am so blessed. I'm so lucky uh, uh, to have that. Um, it's cool. But I will call out one person that has been a role model to me just for work ethic. Uh, and that's Gary V, right? Gary V, uh, oh. he had a conversation with Nipsey Hussle before Nipsey Hussle passed away that inspired, he, that conversation, which is like 70 minutes long on YouTube, I think, that, that conversation inspired what has become the daily financial news. If I didn't listen to Gary and Nipsey to have that conversation, I would have never created the daily financial news that's now been going on for more than 800 days in a row. Um, so I want to get, I want to shout out Gary and, and Nipsey for that conversation. That, their conversation was about music and a song a day and all of that. I'm like, dude, if they're talking about creating music, which I got to imagine is hard, I can talk about something every day. So that's what the daily financial news came from. So shout out Gary and Nipsey for that. So daily financial news, 800 days strong. Yeah. Every day, every day, every day, every day. Dude, that's sick. <laughs> Yeah, this has that been fun, good. man. This this gave me some goosebumps. I'm gonna have to reach out to Dave, see what's, see what's going on with Dave. So uh, I appreciate yeah, this time, man. The, 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 this one was good. I, I liked it a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, re- recycling capital, the role models. I mean, that that was the biggest. I mean, to me, that's the biggest one because that kind of just moves you. you know? Yeah, they're dead. So, folks, if you want to be a part of Omar's team and have him as a role model, how do you want them to reach out? Well, uh, message me, guys. Um, at Omar underscore Alfaro on IG. Or shoot me a text, 760-559-9945. Thank you, buddy. Take care. You're welcome. Thanks, guys.